Welcome to the Ironman Insider brought to you by Martin. I cannot tell you how excited I am for the year ahead with this new podcast and all the great chats we are destined to have this season. I'm your host, Matt Lieto, and I've been wanting to start a podcast with Ironman for a while now, and there's no better time than this year with the new Ironman Pro Series. On this podcast, we're going to dive into everything Ironman, the culture, the lifestyle, the personalities, and of course, the competition. We'll be chatting with the biggest names in the sport and highlighting up-and-coming athletes you should keep an eye on, especially during this thrilling first season of the Ironman Pro Series. Now, you might not no longer be able to be referred to as up-and-coming, considering he won the VinFast Ironman World Championship in Nice last year, but no doubt Sam Laidlow is still on the rise of what he is capable of in the sport, and I'm so stoked to have Sam as our inaugural guest. What's going on, Sam? What's going on? Uh, not much. Just uh, some quiet, quiet time at home, and I'm training, uh, training well. Uh, training's been relatively simple lately, which is which is the life I, I like. And um, and yeah, no complaints. Um, start of the season wasn't wasn't great, um, but yeah, I've made a, made a few changes in in my personal life, and I think we're we're going in the right direction now. So um, yeah, all excited for for the few months ahead, uh, and especially Kona, of course. Awesome, awesome. Good to hear it. Um, just offline or before we we started the hit the record button, you were talking about your little training session today. Just a little uh, spin on the trainer. Um, yeah, yesterday technically. That's why I'm saying yeah. today I had an easy, easy day. Um, but yeah, yesterday I did a did four hours at um, 240 watts. Yeah, that was um, my <laughs> idea. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, did, a, did a short warm up and then. Stared at a screen for four hours and uh, at Ironman heart rate and um, yeah, I know I know the fitness is definitely there, although I haven't managed to show it quite so far at the start of the season. But um, yeah, as I said, um, I, I, I've actually got a big block ahead of me now where I've got another two months before racing uh, Ironman Victoria um, with no no travelling, no commitments, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to do that because it's it's becoming more and more difficult to do so. There's more and more racing, and to just have the time to actually make some big steps forward, uh, I believe requires, uh, a little bit of time, maybe away from racing sometimes. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, and you know, in that training, you said it was uh, your idea as your dad still coaching you. Yeah. Yeah. My dad still coaches me. Um, Sweet. yeah, we coaching, he's been coaching me now for, I don't know, six, seven years since I moved back home. And, uh, yeah, but we, we have a, we kind of work together. I always yeah. kind of, put forward what what kind of ideas i and what i feel i need you know uh i also know i also have a lot of experience in the sport i've had a few coaches and uh and i know kind of i know my body very well uh, i think that's one of my biggest strengths and um yeah and it's we not we don't really we don't have this kind of like one one philosophy of training uh we're sure. definitely big into big into adapting and looking at what's happened and what what are the limiting factors and trying to work towards them um yeah and uh i think we've got we've got some stuff up our sleeves uh, to make sure we we win again this year that's awesome uh yeah the the coach athlete relationship is uh at times a difficult one father-son yeah. relationships are, are a difficult uh one at times as well but uh you guys seem to obviously blend those pretty well especially with an athlete like you like you seem to be very knowledgeable you're not just throwing stuff at the wall but if you don't mind, you know, I'm sure some of your competitors will listen, but just curious, like when you decide you want to do a four hour chain ride at 340 Watts, what, what, what are you, like you said, you have something you think you can gain from it. Like, what's that conversation like with your dad and like what for you, that type of workout, what do you think you're, what weakness do you think you're working on? Yeah. So, um, I think in, in Ironman in general, um, if you look at most athletes, like the limiting factor is, especially on the bike and maybe even in the swim, the limiting factor is often strength, resistance. Yeah. Um, like everybody, everybody there on the start line when we get to the worlds is fit enough to ride at three forty watts. Um, like it's under their, it's under their threshold, you know. But it's it's like who's got the strength to maintain it and who's efficient enough to do it for four hours um so that's that's our belief um but then obviously of course there's compromises to that if you just do them kind of sessions all the time uh you're not going to probably do a big volume in the whole week so then over time maybe you lose a bit in terms of metabolic efficiency so it's trying to 
trying to find a balance of of doing some good consistent training and then every so often doing some good sessions that get you the, the adaptation you know and trying to mix and balance them too and then also in all three disciplines um is very hard but i think what what we really focus on and what everybody i believe focuses should focus on is just identifying their own their own limiting factors you know because we we all have different ones you know i train a lot with with my training partner after i came sixth in the world and my dad's also coaches him and like he could he could probably not run for a month and and still run a 236 or 237 marathon you know off the bike so we have very very different limiting factors and so what works for me won't necessarily work for someone else but i think definitely it's important for for coaches i believe to also hear out what what the athletes needs can be because sometimes the, the athletes can can know also what what they need you know and i think it's it's really important to kind of have that that conversation yeah i mean i think, think the uh kind of old adage is uh race your strengths train your weaknesses something yeah like that yeah, yeah kind of has something to do with it but um no i love that and i think you know you can see with the way that you race having such dominant bike rides at the world championships that strength resistance as you talk about obviously has to do with you having power at the end of the bike ride but being able to run as fast as you're running off the bike which is pretty darn fast right like that has a lot to do with that run yeah, I think it's something that comes that takes a long, long time. Strength resistance, you know, it's built. Or for, for me, in my case, we've been working on it since I've been a kid because it's always been my dream. So obviously, somebody who's just switched from from racing short course or even who's dedicated to trying to win a half Ironman, you know, and then suddenly going to Ironman, uh, you can't just expect to gain that kind of strength resistance in the last uh in 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 six months or in a year, even. You know, I, I, it's a very it's a very slow progression. And even if you look at if you look at my own career in, in Ironman, like I, I would do a lot of races where uh, like one of my, one of the first ones that I led was Ironman UK. And I kind of had like a 10 yeah. minute lead over Joe Skipper or 15 minute lead even. And then it just like the wheels completely fell off, you know, and it's, and so we knew that it was possible because I was clearly doing it. It was just like, right, year upon year, we're just going to make sure you're stronger so you can maintain that because already your fitness levels can put you there. Uh, but then, as I said, for other people, it might, there might be somebody whose who's, who's threshold or isn't high enough, but he's got very good strength resistance, so he needs to maybe... That's, that's, that's for instance, that's my problem when I go down to racing uh, half Ironman is that I'm pushing the same power as I am uh, pretty much in, in Ironman, you know, so it's trying to trying to get comfortable with uncomfortable, and if I was to um, focus more on half Ironman, I would have to just do a bit more uh, LT2 work and uh, and kind of almost not not worry about being efficient you know but at the moment yeah definitely my focus for the last five six years has been about them last two hours on on the ironman uh leg bike leg and uh and i think that's shown you know in kona i got i got caught up by magnus and norwegians that turn around and then and then rode back up back out again so um yeah and then in nice i mean nice is a bit easier because mo- the end of the course is the easiest part um but i don't think even i to be honest didn't expect the the time gap to kind of keep going out like that so i definitely feel there's there's been a long-term progression in in trying to find uh my for for my strength to become the last the second part of the ironman bike thing yeah yeah and i i think uh the hard part talking to somebody who's won a world championship the ironman distance and been second in two tries is especially with the kind of the mentality that you have like you you talk like someone who has been doing it for a long time right like yeah well you're... i have i have i know yeah. i know i'm only 25 but uh totally i have i i also, I also came eighth in saint george before that um yeah. yeah yeah and um but yeah i mean i i did my first iron distance when i was 18 you know so i've already been i've already been doing it seven years seven years of iron man and i think anybody who's anybody who's already like devoted to like professionally devoted to Ironman for seven years, um, will get quite good, you know? So it's not just yeah. like I did that on the scene. Um, but uh, yeah, I, the way I looked at it was that, um, I could kind of see, you know, even it took, it took yarn and took, it took everybody like at least five, six years to master long distance triathlon, yeah. you know, it's just, it's a different game. And in my eyes, I was like, okay, well, if I, if I start this when I'm, when I'm 20, you know, when I'm actually at my peak physical, physical age you know which is often 27 28 29 
then like I'll already have the experience under my belt, you know. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what that will mean. I don't know if I'll still have the uh, the motivation to to keep pushing when I'm when I'm 35. I don't know. Probably not. But um, for now, <laughs> I, for now, I'm loving it. And I still believe I have a lot a lot of room for improvement. It's just, and I guess everybody feels the same way. It's just, can you improve faster than everyone else? You know. Yeah, and I think it, to me, it's that uh, the unique part of you in that situation is not that you're like necessarily new on the scene, but the fact that it seems like you've had that mentality that you're building for further down the road. Where a lot of younger guys want to, okay, I'm going to try to do this in a year or two years. And I think you know, listening to your your training, you know, obviously you've already won uh, the world championship in Nice. Obviously, you want to win in Kona as well. And it's, I know, like clearly talking to you and seeing how you work, like your brain is like, yeah, you want to win this year, but you're doing the things to help you win in like four or five years too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think somebody spoke to me about, uh, they watched, I think it was the press conference or something, uh, the pre-race press conference in, in Nice. Uh, and yeah, I said something like I, I said, I said, I, yeah, it doesn't matter what happens this weekend. You know, I know I'm going to win this world championship one day. It, just, yeah. uh, it, does, it might be this weekend. It might not, you know, I just, I knew I had this very clear kind of route of where we wanted to go. And we knew that that route was possible. We don't know if it's going to take a year, two years, three years, you know, and, and I believe everybody can make progress, you know, but uh, as I said, again, it's how, how quickly you can make that progress, which is, uh, which is tough. And uh, for Nice, for me, it came at, I mean, I, I, I don't feel, I had a very good day, uh, for sure, but I was at the same level as I was uh, a year before because of various things that I had a calf tear about yeah. two months out, um, and then I got COVID in Singapore, etc. So it was um, I kind of arrived there in. I'd obviously I'd had a year's more training in me, but technically I wasn't quite as fit as where I was. I think in Kona the year before, um, and yeah, I, I really feel like now I've actually got the time uh, I kind of got everything I needed to do I, I kind of got out of the way straight after Kona uh, after Nice sorry like all the kind of sponsorship commitments and stuff that or traveling to to meet and also just celebrating a bit you know enjoying life yeah. I got all that out of the way for three or four months you know after Nice uh, which means that yes I can't peak I can't peak in in March but um, yes and now I feel like um, yeah I'm on a a very good trage- tra- trajectory. Can't can't pronounce it. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it will be next few months will be fun. That's sweet. And so in that building process, obviously the Ironman that you're doing this year, as you said, you're training for Victoria Guest Days. Uh, is there anything specifically that you're trying to kind of get in the tool tool chest out of that race for these you know future Ironman or bids at World Championships? Yeah, I think um, I I, I want to. Um, I want to race at the level I, I know I I have in me. I think I've got I've got some numbers in me that I haven't yet had managed to express in in racing. Um, I was very very fit at the start of last year, leaning into Ironman Lanzarote and stuff. Uh, and the race didn't go at all to plan. And when I got back, I found out that I had like a liver infection, which kind of explained why I just I couldn't I wasn't taking any of the carbs that were going in. Um, and so yeah, I feel that yeah i just want to i really want to race my own race um but that's becoming more and more difficult because now the density is really high and i could quite easily drag drag along another another 10 guys that probably run faster you know so yeah making sure i i have a really strong bike um as as i said i think i'm i'm easily capable of holding a much higher power than i have done in my previous ironmans um or at least training shows that and yeah the running is just a it's been a very it's been a very consistent but slow progression. You know, I'm gaining a minute or two minutes every year. Um, if it can be three minutes, then that's great. Um, but yeah, I, we need to look at it, look at it realistically. And um, and yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not suddenly going to run like Patrick Lang. You know, I just have to play with my own cards. And, and that's what I like about the sport. You know, the sports very honest in that way. I believe that uh, everybody kind of comes to the game with their strengths and weaknesses. And that nobody's born to, to do all three, you know, um, and the closer you can kind of train your body to be good at all three, then obviously you become, you become good. But, um, yeah, I just, I just, that's always what, um, attracts me towards long distance triathlon is that I just feel it's a very, very honest sport. You know, I don't think, yeah, as I said, I don't think anyone's born to be 
an Ironman world champion, you know, but if you work really hard at it, you can, you can, you can become it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, uh, you've, you've shown that you've put in the hard work and I think also, I mean, this belief that you have and that you've, uh, been able to develop with the team around you and your dad and, uh, everybody else is like pretty extraordinary for somebody your age, right. To like, know that like before Nice you were going to win. Right. And like, you have this belief that if I put the work, like it's easier to put the work in if you have that belief, right. Cause you're like dishonoring that reality that's down the road. If you don't put that work in, right. To an extent. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, in Nice, I'd, I'd actually, it was actually kind of the, the team around me had a lot of faith and stuff. And I actually noticed that when we brought out our own documentary, like where my, my videographer had done like interviews with everyone and stuff. Yeah. And, um, it kind of, it really, it really shocked me in their head how, how adamant they were that I was going to win when in my head, like if you ask my training pond, I was like, <laughs> I was saying to him every ride that like, ah, uh, wouldn't it be, I, I, I kind of, I just, because of what had happened and I had a bad season, um, I was just like, oh, coming top 10 will be good, you know, like top 10 is fine, you know, that's what, that's the mentality I went in there with and I was just like, all oh, right, just, just enjoy it, like, it's probably, it's Jan's last race, uh, just like, you've, you've looked up at, to him for, since forever, um, just, just enjoy the party, right, and, um, and I, and I did, I really, really enjoyed it, like, there was, even like people I saw out on course on the bike, like I was chatting to them and just, yeah, saying shit. And, um, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed the day. And I think that's what got me, got me the result I wanted. Um, but as I said, I'm also, I'm also very, um, aware that the Norwegians weren't there, um, that they changed the game when they arrived. Uh, and, but equally I know that I, I, I'm capable of way, way better. And, um, yeah, I hope, well, I don't hope. I, I know that, that that will happen this year in October. Yeah. yeah, and is there anything to learn from that build up to knees in those last couple of weeks, like where you had, you know, those self doubts to an extent, right? And you know, we did a pre race interview in Nice, and you said you were on the couch or in your bed ten week or ten days prior with yeah. COVID. And I think a lot of times athletes will look at that and be like, Hey, I, I won the Ironman world championship, uh, in spite of having this like downtime and these struggles, uh, instead of like maybe because of, right. Like, do you think there's anything like physiologically you learned from that downtime or was that just like you pulled it out and that was it? Um, I, th I think, um, yeah, I, I think now this definitely made me realize now that, um, if I can train, like, like I didn't have this belief in me before, but now I definitely do since Nice. I, I generally believe that if I can train how I want for two, maybe three months and show up on race day healthy, I generally believe like that there's nobody that can beat me, you know, and that's, that's a deep profound belief that's kind of, that's happened since, uh, since then. But then what's difficult is kind of, uh, controlling all them them variables you know it's like making sure you do have three perfect months of training uh right. and waking up and feeling healthy you know and, <laughs> yeah and, and then and then all the variables during the race you know whether it's making sure you don't have a flat tire or or making sure you don't miss all your bottles etc etc so yeah it's um there's still variables in our sport and that's why that's what makes it exciting um but yeah when i was i think back in nice that was my biggest my biggest strength was to also go there and to like, people had almost forgotten about me, you know, even though technically on paper, I, I should have been the favorite because I came second last year and Gustav wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, but people had forgotten about me and, uh, and I just, I just went in there and had, had no pressure and just, and just enjoyed it. And, um, I, yeah, I work with, with psychologists and stuff. And I think, um, it's quite easy to bring that, that kind of mentality back, to Kona, even if I am the favorite, even if I have had great races, if, if I have a load of Legro, like great races and go to Kona, I still believe I can go there in the same mindset because like, what have I got to lose? You know, I've, I've already won a world title. I'm the youngest ever to do it. I'm the first French person to do it. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I have a bad day, you know, in Kona, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I've got another yeah. few years ahead of me. Uh, and that's, that's the real strength, you know, um, which, yeah, I, I, I did a really good job of almost, 
switching into that mindset in Kona, in Nice, sorry, despite actually there being uh, a ton of pressure because, like, after Kona, all I had, I suddenly had like all the best sponsors and they'd all invested a lot in me. Yeah. And I'd like not delivered once in the whole year, you know, and then like it was all resting on this one race that was left. Um, and so, but all that was, I, I just, I managed to completely eliminate that. So it's just finding ways to, yeah, change your mindset uh, and look at it in, in a different way. But um, yeah, I feel there's, there's just something about for me, the world championships is because it's always been what I've looked up to and, and dreamt of. It's all, when I get there, I'm just so happy to to be there and to do it that um everything else is kind of like that that happiness come it's like an emotional override for for everything else you know and i don't i don't think about anything else and um yeah i'm sure i'm sure my family and i will go into kona with the same same mindset and this is also the first time where i get to really take my whole family there uh back in back in 2022 it was um just me and my dad because obviously we didn't have the same financial budget and um <laughs> yeah. yeah so um well, yeah okay. this will be this will be a really nice, a uh, really nice holiday, should we say? Uh, that's sweet. Yeah, and so obviously Kona's sounds like from talking to you and uh, you know inferring that like that's been a focus you know since you were a kid like wanting to to get there and you know like y- y- theoretically you could think of a better debut in Kona obviously one step higher but like that that Kona debut was like kind of bananas right like do you can you go in with that same kind of like fresh look and excitement after having those results no no i mean you yeah I, as i said it's it depends on on the lead up you know i think it's it almost becomes harder the more you've had good results lean into it you know let's say now i win vittorio and and have some good races and stuff then then like then i'm sure i'll, I'll be the favorite for the race uh and so then you're like well you you personally feel like the only step that counts is, is the win and, and everybody else around you is. But as I said, I'm not, yeah, you just have to, you have to make a, con- a conscious decision of not going there with, with that mindset. Um, and yeah, I, I believe that, I believe that everything, like everything happens for a reason. And, um, and I, I, I know this moment's been coming for a, for a long, long time. And I just feel like now it's, it's a culminating point in my career where I've, I've kind of, I've also gone back to, really the basics and and like i'm really with my family now and and working towards this and we're all like super invested you know and and i know that nobody has that team around me you know so and nobody's as devoted to that one single race as i am um and and yeah so as i said as long as i wake up happy and healthy and um then i I generally believe yeah it'll be tough i'll be tough to beat yeah and i think you will obviously be tough to beat and i think it's got to be a little different though, going in with, you know, you were given a leash the first year, right? Yeah. To an, ex- to an and extent, the second right? Year. And, and, yeah, and the second year. Uh, so the second year, I don't think they really had an option, right? I think the, the first year, maybe yeah. there was like a choice to an extent yeah. from the Norwegians. Yeah, like, do you th- I, I agree. Anyway. And, I, and I, I found, um, in the whole lead up to Nice, I was I was trying to prepare for that mentally. I was like, right, what happened in Kona is not going to happen again. Like, I just I had to, <laughs> I kept telling myself, you're not going to come into T2 with a five or six minute lead. Like, there's just no way, you know. Um, and then and then it happened again, and I was like, well, <laughs> uh, I have to make the most of this. And so yeah, I kind of just realised actually, like. Yeah, I, I, I've realised now that actually on my day, like I can in the second half of the bike leg, I can actually ride away from even the strongest riders, you know, like Magnus and stuff. Um, and also, when I look back at Kona, um, and I think I said I, I said this almost straight after the race, but in in one of the interviews, um, I kind of believe that if it was just a time trial, you know, if it was just an individual time trial, yeah. I kind of feel like I would have won that race because uh gustav and and christian were in completely different circumstances you know they had magnus bringing him back to the front and then magnus getting the penalty etc uh and also in the swim you know I, i'm i think i'm considerably faster than both gustav and christian swimming but with the way kona is it's just one big pack you know and it's very difficult you know when there's 10 yeah. men in line to to get rid of people um so i kind of had that belief that if we were just talking about pure numbers uh already at the time i, I could have beaten them and um and yeah so the goal for me is just to make it as much as possible 
a time trial, you know, and I think um and I think Lucy Lucy had the perfect example of that this year, you know. Um she knew that on her day uh she could time trial the race faster than anyone. Um and yeah, she just wasn't messing around and uh and did exactly uh what she'd been trying to do for for four or five years prior. You know? Yeah, no, great uh, shout out to her because I mean that she's done it a few times and she did a uh, seventy point three worlds and it was I think one of the best seventy point three performances I've ever seen and it's just uh, like, yeah. put everybody in your rear view, people are thinking tactics and then they're all scrambling like two miles into the bike trying to catch up, right? Yeah, yeah, but that you, you notice that with a few like it's like it's like Alistair when he when he started racing his Olympic like career, you know, it was like he would just race to the front like lead the race until he couldn't. Uh, and then Lucy did, Lucy would do the same and I would do the same. And it's just, it's just, it's just our instincts and how we are. So we can put, we, I can always like go into a race with, with tactics in my head or numbers in my head. But when we're there, we're just, it's pretty simple. You know, it's just for eight hours, try to get from A to B, uh, even though A and B are pretty close in Kona, uh, <laughs> get from A to B as fast as possible. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if the six minute lead will happen again. Um, I, I think, uh, I think Magnus could definitely be, uh, a player on a, on a flatter course like Kona. I don't think he had his day in, in Kona last time. Um, and having raced him in Roth and stuff, um, he's definitely, he's definitely a big guy with, with some strong legs, you know? And, uh, and, uh, but yeah, I also, I, I'm very confident that I can outrun him on the marathon. Uh, with consistent training. Um, yeah. So that's the goal. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think that tactically that's, you know, a little different talking to you last year, you know, you said you were, I think a little proud of yourself for like going back into the group a little bit into the bike and then like waiting till later. And I think, you know, it's likely that you could have that same lead, you know, five to six minutes, but I think to your point, especially with like strength and resistance, like you're then putting it in those guys' hands to have to also kind of ride hard the whole time, right? Where yeah, in yeah. Kona last year, I rode up, you know, I was doing my reporting, but there was nobody doing whiteboard. So I was doing whiteboard uh, for you guys. And I went up to Gustav at like, I think maybe a docky crossing. And I like held the thing and he didn't look and I was like, dude, look. And it was like four minutes. And he like, it was the most comedic. He literally went <gasps> like, you know, in the goofy way that he does it. Right. Like this huge, huge phase. And was like, Oh, okay. Well we need to pay attention to that a little bit. Right. And I think yeah. he was comfortable and in a, like a spot where they had been riding hard, but like not on it all day. Like how much different difference is it when you're trying to beat, as you said, the Norwegians, if you can have them like working hard the whole time. Yeah, I think it's, um, there's always kind of been two schools, wasn't there to, to Ironman racing. It's like, do you just, do you ride within yourself and then, and then you've got a weapon on the marathon and, and you run a two thirty five or two thirty if it's, if it's getting really crazy. Um, or do you, do you just bite the bullet and, and time trial it? Like just, yeah, let's say you have a seven or eight out of 10 RP the whole day and, and see where that gets, you, you know, um and yeah i think i think this year i think this year magnus for instance will be more careful about not bringing them not bringing them with him you okay. know i don't think he really i don't think he really cared as much about that because he just wanted to ride his numbers and he was ha saying it was his first kona and he, he thought that they would beat him either way you know um but now i think he he generally believes he's a contender for the win and um yeah so I don't know. It's it's difficult. Maybe maybe Magnus and me work together. I I, I don't know what the, what the circumstances will be. Uh, but equally, it's like the short course guys have got to. Well, when I'm talking, or the Norwegians, for instance, have got to remember that for two years, like I've been practicing time trialing for four hours, you know, and they haven't got that in their legs, you know. So it's you can't just you can't just make that up. And yes, they're they're very very good runners. Um, but it's just like Magnus and me would have put in the hard miles on the bike, so. I don't believe they have got, they will have the level to, to follow. Um, and then it's, yeah, it's, they obviously run very fast and it's, it's always the same. It's like, will they catch or, or will they not? But, um, yeah, I think the sports also has also evolved since, since they kind of last dipped their toe into it. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Big sign. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's interesting hearing you talk about Kona and kind of how, 
the world is on the racing circuit these days with, you know, the Norwegians, I feel like they're still outliers, but like the fact that, you know, going to the Olympics and then going back to Ironman, like it's crazy that they have the ability to do that. But I feel like you're kind of like harking back to the old school Kona guys, right? Like a Peter Reeves yeah. and Norman, like it was Kona. That was like all they cared about. And like that yeah. was their focus all year. And they had these performances because of that. Do you think like that's all changed or like people are going to start noticing that like, because you put that effort and that focus in that if they actually want to do that, like Ben Hoffman is another one, right? Like we, yeah. he's kind of the old guard. There's not many doing that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's becoming more and more, more and more difficult to do that. And it takes, yeah, it's, it, I, I'm lucky enough to, to have some great sponsors behind me and stuff so I can kind of afford to focus my whole, my whole, uh, race season around, around this golden egg, which is, which is definitely Kona, um, or the Olympics if you're racing short course. But yeah, I, I totally understand. There's a lot of guys who are in a position where they're not going to turn down like whatever a chance of winning a hundred K, you know, if it means them racing six more races a year, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm in a different mentality in, in, in that sense. Um, and because at the end of the day, I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather win Kona and, and earn nothing, you know, I mean, that's not, that's not what happens, but I'd rather win Kona and earn nothing than come, go and come third in a load of races or second and win a win a couple of other races, uh, and earn a hundred K, you know, uh, that's just, the way my brain works um but yeah so so there's definitely the financial aspect and then also it's just a bit of a risk also you know if you i think a lot of people were like oh well, i'm gonna rather than having one target i'm gonna have seven and then hope that hope that i'll i'll, I'll hit one or two of them you know um uh, but actually it's just such a big reward when you when you do commit fully into into something um and yeah like christian was the perfect example of that with Tokyo, you know, he was saying like four or five years out that that's all his, that's every morning he would wake up with Tokyo in mind. Uh, he said he was going to win it when nobody believed him and he went there and, and won it. And he it, it just made it like it became a formality, you know, uh, the way he did yeah. it. And, uh, um, yeah. And so it, in my head, it, it really is the same. And whether, whether it's this year, next year, or, well, next year it won't be Kona, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a stepping stone. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I keep saying the same thing, but I'm just going to go there and uh, and enjoy it. You know, so I do really like racing the Ironman World Championships. That's really what I've what I've been put on the planet to do, and uh, and I love that. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you hear people talk like that, and it's I feel like they're kind of shining on a little bit. Like, oh yeah, you know, it's you really got to focus on one. It doesn't matter if I win the other ones, but like you haven't won another Ironman, right? So like, it's clear, like it, it's banana. It's crazy that your first Ironman win was a world uh, championship, right? So I, like, I, it's uh, clear you live it. I was just, I was just running with my training partner and I said, uh, I was joking. I said, yeah, my goal for this season is to win an Ironman outside of world championship. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, um, it, yeah, again, it's like, there's this, there's this weird thing where everything that kind of I've, I've said since I've been a kid is just like, manifested and um and one of the things was always i would always complain to my dad like about that i've not won a 70.3 or a or an ironman you know and he was like and, and my mum would always like butt in and say yeah you're you're waiting till you're waiting to the world champs like you know, just win the world champs you know we'd say it jokingly and then and then funny enough it happened you know and it's yeah it wasn't even thinkable at the time because to qualify without winning a race is pretty it's pretty hard for yeah. like to yeah. So, but yeah, it, it, it is what it is. And, um, yeah, either, either way, um, you know, what happened in Nice was, was insane, you know, with, um, with the crowds there and everything. And, and I think even now, actually I've got the French, like the equivalent of the biggest TV channel coming here. Uh, they're documenting yeah. the whole lead up to Kona and Kona. So I think on a national scale, it will be, it's definitely, it's definitely helped, uh, triathlon in general, you know, not just Ironman distance because it wasn't, yeah, long distance triathlon was not recognized in France. And, um, now we have a few, a few good guys in the top 10. So, um, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely great for, for the future of, of France. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how the culture has changed in the last few years. Obviously, that has a lot to do with you. And and you're right. The the vibe in Nice was crazy. I mean, I we don't know each other super well. We've talked, uh, you know, obviously a few times before races. But I've I've got a cold, dark heart. 
that's just me. Right. And I even was like shedding tears when you were coming down that finish line, man, like everybody <laughs> was, was pumped. So it's, uh, you've, you've clearly, you know, lit a fire in, in that country. And, um, it's, it's pretty fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously Kona is a, is a very difficult like place to get to. So there are fans, but like Kona is still like renowned for like you being on your own in the lava fields, et cetera, et cetera. And then Nice was like the total opposite on the marathon. You know, it was just like it yeah. was heaving. And the first lap, the first lap, like just before, like as I was the first to set out, like I don't think like all the police and stuff or something had got time, had had, had time to get there. So actually they're like all the crowds were like on the, like there was, a, I could only see the cone basically in the middle, in the middle yeah. of the, of the, of the road. And then they were just kind of like moving out, you know, like in the Tour de France. And then they organized it and it got pushed back. But uh, yeah, that first first like two k was was just insane. Yeah, I mean, did did it feel like like shaking your head make believe? Like in that situation, you've got all the fans, and even like I was around at the end. You like high five Ferdino as you like go down to get to the the finish yeah. line, right? With like a k or two to go. Like it just seemed uh, like this. As a kid, if you're like, well, how do I win Ironman World Championship? Like, this is the dream you actually have, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it was just, as I said, it wasn't, I didn't know you couldn't make it up, you know, for to, to, to kind of, for the Ironman World Champs to kind of be moved. And for me to first, like, be really actually, like, disappointed that it got moved because, like, yeah. I felt like I'd just been, like, taking my dream away from me. Um, and then, and then I went to Nice to, uh, to do the announcement actually with Iron Man and, and with everyone. Um, and I remember speaking and it was like, and then I saw everyone, like how motivated they were, like for the French guys and stuff. And I thought, actually, this could, this could be quite a good opportunity here just for, for France in general. You know, I think there's a few guys who've got a shot doing a podium, uh, or at least like a top 10. And, um, and yeah, and I was like, actually this, like, it could make a big, big thing out of it. And, um, and then, yeah, I was stood, I remember walking along the promenade with, with, uh, with my ex-girlfriend at the time and saying that, like, saying like, do you think, do you think I could win this? And she was like, uh, I don't know. And I was like, well, I'm telling you, I'm going to win this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Although if you asked me that a few days before, I probably wouldn't have said that, but, um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, you couldn't have made it up and, uh, I'm just, I'm just super grateful that it happened. And also, What's good is that I kind of achieved that and it was great, but I've still, I've yeah. still got something to go and get. You know, I've still got Kona because that was also that was always, what was good about it is that it also like when you when you achieve, I so I achieved effectively my dream um, in some in some sense, and I was like for the first time ever, I was like for the next month or two, I was waking up and like not really knowing what I wanted from life anymore. You know, I had right. it, I had it all, <laughs> and um, and uh, that was just so I had I, I struggled a bit then uh just kind of trying to re reset myself targets i guess and yeah. knowing knowing what i wanted and what made me happy just in life full stop because yeah i don't know if you can go through life constantly having a, a goal like an ironman world championship um and uh so also i feel that kind of prepared me for for kona and what what will happen after kona you know because i think it's really i, I i've been in the sport I did my first triathlon when I was four years old, you know, so 21 years I've been in the sport. And, um, I, at some point I'm probably going to need to like take a break, you know, and just and see, see other things in life and test other, test myself in, in different ways. And that's not to say yeah. I won't, I won't come back, you know? Um, but yeah, I think for, for my longevity in the sport, I think that's I almost need like a, like a gap year, you know? And I think, um, yeah, the goal, the goal is to win, win Kona and then, and then assess and, and see what I do. Uh, but I think I'll, if I, if and when I do win Kona, I'll probably take a year out and, um, and learn to run and then come back and just be, be unstoppable. That's a, uh, that's a scary, uh, scary proposition. Um, all your competitors just shuddered a little bit. Um, you're obviously, uh, being humble, pretty, pretty great runner as it is, but I, uh, I hear what you're saying. And so I just got a couple more for you. Cause I know you've uh, had a long day. What, is it and what was it about Kona that just grabbed you and there's like that's that's the that's the the northern star like what was it about that race uh i think it for me i was quite it was it was quite unique in the sense that my parents owned a training camp 
like business and I was just growing like every week I'd meet new people uh coming from all over the world doing triathlon and they that's all they would speak about you know is, is Kona um and yeah so then I just I found myself watching watching epic motivational videos you know on, on YouTube <laughs> um and yeah I would just I would just binge watch them you know um and I loved it I just I, I've always liked that kind of that kind of last man standing kind of uh feeling or vibe about about the iron man you know whether it's when you see them crawling or just people really pushing to their limits um and that's that at the end of the day is really what i love and if i if i also was to take a year out uh and uh and i'd still be like I, if i when i say take a gap year like it would be a gap year from professional like high level triathlon but i would still as i said i still want to get fit and learn to run and do other and test myself in other ways you know i really enjoy just seeing what my body can do and 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 working towards that uh with a goal in mind and yeah i I guess for me iron man was just um just uh, the the perfect image of of endurance sport you know you have to be complete you have to be mentally strong you have to be healthy happy everything you know it's not just about pure uh numbers you know i felt like any, as i said before nobody's born to do an iron man I, and i generally believe that yeah yeah no that's awesome and i you know you said some of that uh this question last question i'm going to ask you in that answer but i'll um still still ask it you know obviously you have that this belief that again we could talk another hour about me just trying to understand how you have that innate belief and that's amazing and you have this specific goal that you want to achieve. And obviously Ironman is a lot more than just professionals racing at the hardest races in the world. It's the, the amateurs out there as well. So what, what one thing would you give at someone that's, you know, getting ready to train for their first 70.3 or Ironman, and maybe they're fixated on just the fact that it's going to be such a challenge. If you were to take a step back and give like a little bit of input on like that journey on what they should maybe be thinking about. Um, I think everybody has their own reason of, of why they're doing it. Um, and I think it's really important to identify that. Um, because yeah, as I said, everybody, everybody will be doing it for a different reason, reason, whether it's just to have a, for some people, it might be, I don't know, to have a little bit more balance in their life. Uh, it might be their form of meditation away from work. It might be, um, I don't know, it could be to, to make their parents proud or et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. Um, but when you really identify what it is that makes you tick, then it kind of, it kind of becomes easy. You know, you kind of, your, your reason why is, Mm -hmm is uh is much stronger when you know what it is and um yeah so i would say i would say that and then just kind of also when there are moments of stress or doubt also just taking taking a step back uh and and realizing that actually it's like it's not a big deal if whatever if you do dnf or it's not a big deal if you don't perform how you want uh in the grand scheme of things you know you're you're healthy and and, and fit and and can be on the start line uh and or, or not but train and you know uh and i think that's already that's already a privilege so yeah on the one my first tip would be really identify the why they're doing it why they're challenging themselves and then the second thing is when it when it gets tough just kind of like take a step back and and actually realize that you're already in a pretty good spot that's perfect and everybody listening should be we should hear pens <laughs> on paper, right? Like write, write that down. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's worth something. Uh, Sam cannot thank you enough for being on our first episode of Ironman Insider presented by Morton and, uh, man, best of luck at Victoria guest days and can't wait to see, uh, how you shake things up again in Kona. (laughs) Thanks very much, Matt. See you guys. Great stuff from Sam. No surprise there. Dude's a legend always has great stuff to stay. If you didn't write down everything he said, record go back write that stuff down he there's a lot of gems in there that that dude's internal belief and how he gets that and how he trains behind that is crazy impressive to me so uh again thanks sam for coming on that was that was sweet um you know we talked about iron man pro series is going to be something that we're going to be focusing on uh here just giving updates and um, obviously talking to athletes that uh, are going to impact those races as well um but this last weekend we definitely had a big shake up in the iron man pro series on the women's side with jackie herring 
doing her first Ironman since 2015, and she won the Women's European Championship in Hamburg and with a 252 run. Hello, Jackie. We see you. Good job. Uh, super stoked. And, you know, I know she was a little nervous going back to that iron iron distance, but she, she crushed it. And with that, that moves her into second place just behind the new leader who also raced in Hamburg, Vanilla Langridge. Uh, but just 212 points separate those first two. So super tight racing uh, on the women's leaderboard. And we had a third position for... I believe it's, yeah, Danielle Lewis is in third place now. She's a little bit further behind than those two athletes, but um, it's tight racing and you have to look at things like, you know, Jackie's, she's only raced one full distance race so far to Fenella's two. So like things are really going to start shaking up. So make sure you keep watching the, the Ironman Pro Series races and watching that, uh, that leaders board continue to change throughout the season. And we'll have all that for you here on the Ironman Insider presented by Martin. And on the men's side, uh, no changes since Chattanooga, but there, that was a crazy race. Matt Hansen did a Matt Hansen thing, what he does, and he ran through the field uh, from way back and was able to catch just in the last, you know, few, few K, a lot of his competitors and get to lead and win that race and put him into the series lead as well. So he's in the lead in front of Patrick Langa, who's just 148 points behind, and Jackson Laundry sits in third place, another 1440 behind Patrick. So those two athletes are, are pretty high up. Um, but again, you got to look at kind of the distance races that they've done and how many races they've done. Um, those things will start to kind of uh, change as the season goes. So keep an eye on that space. Our next races on the series will be Ironman 70.3 Boulder uh, this upcoming weekend and Cannes Airport uh, Asia Pacific Championships Ironman Cannes uh, weekend after that. And so super excited about those two races. They're going to be hugely important uh, to the series. I'm actually going to be on the ground uh, showing you guys what happens uh, kind of behind the scenes in those races as well. But keep your eye on this space and um, the rest of uh, Ironman's uh, outlets to, to keep an eye on what's going on in the pro series. And if you enjoyed today's conversation, please like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to this podcast. If you're sitting on the trainer, you can also watch this podcast as video on the Ironman Triathlon YouTube channel. So head there if you want to do that. And to stay across all the latest Ironman Pro Series news, follow at Ironman Tri on Instagram and check out proseries.ironman.com for standings, athlete bios, episodes of A Fighting Chance, uh, replays of races, and more. And... Got to give another shout out to our presenting sponsor, Martin, the official sports performance nutrition partner of the Ironman Global Series. And in 2023, both Sam Laidlow and Lucy Charles Barclay fueled their world championship victories with Martin's hydrogel technology. And it's the innovation that enables athletes to consume more carbohydrates at race intensity with less risk of stomach discomfort. And all Ironman athletes have access to Martin hydrogels and solids on course in 20. 24. And well, there you go. Thanks so much again for tuning in to our inaugural, our first Ironman Insider podcast presented by Martin. I'm so excited for this season ahead and this opportunity to chat with all these amazing athletes and dig deeper into what makes Ironman athletes tick across all levels. And, uh, you know, pros, amateurs, we're going to talk to everybody and we're going to get inside what makes the Ironman athletes tick. I'm your host, Matt Lieto. Thanks for tuning in.